All right, kids, you're going to keep going through our talk about torque. <laughs> so remember, torque is abbreviated with the Greek letter tau. It is uh, a force times the distance, okay? But we multiply it by the side of the angle between that force and the distance. And that distance is a very pacific distance. It is the distance from the axis of rotation to wherever the force is located. And they have to be perpendicular to each of R, all right? So again, it's a force times distance, but multiply it by the side of the angle if it's not already perpendicular, because that side of the angle will make it perpendicular to uh, each other. It's very, very similar to work. Remember, work is a force times distance, but those two items are parallel to one another. And if they're not parallel, remember you push the cosine button to make them parallel, and we call it a dot product. So a force times a distance parallel would be multiplied by a cos theta. That was called a dot product. What you got was work which is energy. It's a Newton meter, but we replace the NM with the letter J, and that J stands again for energy. It is, it is not a vector. Energy is, is a scalar. It's just an amount of stuff. It's just a number. But when we talk about torque, torque has a direction. So when you multiply those two vectors together, the radius or the distance times the force, Instead of taking the cos, you will take the sine of theta, all right? Associate sines with torques, torques with sines. Mm. And another thing that makes it very different from a dot product is with a cross product, the order at which you multiply these two items matter. So what I'm showing you down here is with the cross product an R cross multiplied to an F is not the same thing as an F cross multiplied to an R. Now, just, just from an algebraic standpoint, it is. An R times an F is the same thing as an F times an R. So numerically, they're going to be the same. Magnitudinally, they will be the same. But vectorially, they will be very different. And what you see me doing just instinctively is I'm moving my right hand in different orientations. You will learn why I'm uh, doing that in a bit. But torque, and ooh, and please remember this, the order at which matters. So go with the R cross F, okay? I know I sometimes say F, R, but please go with R multiplied by an F and take the sign of the theta, okay? Get in the habit of doing it in that order. That will help you tremendously when it comes to finding the direction in which that torque uh, changes some quantities, specifically Romo, hey, Tony, um, of an item, all right? So if they aren't perpendicular, the sign button makes them perpendicular in much the same way uh, with work. If they weren't parallel, the cosine button made them parallel. This example I went over in the uh, notes the, uh, the other day. If you're trying to balance a meter stick at the 30 centimeter mark, you know the weight of that meter stick is focused at the 50 centimeter mark. So the radius in this case is 20 centimeters, 0.2 meters. That distance is perpendicular to the force. So if you want to write sine 90, go right ahead. But radius cross force, all right, times the sine of the theta between them. The angle already happens to be 90, so the sine of 90 you know is 1, so that's the maximum torque. That is what the torque is, and remember that radius, again, is the perpendicular distance from the fulcrum, which is the axis of rotation, which is that little triangle there. It's the pivot point. It's where we start measuring everything from, okay? So what if they're not 90 degrees from one another? What if the angle ain't right? Don't make it wrong, but <clears throat> what it means is now we are going to have to push the sign of the angle between them. So if this is the radius, that's the force. You can tell that angle theta is not 90. What you will do is simply multiply R cross F, and you will push the sign button of 90. Now remember, I put them tail to tip here. That's for adding vectors. We're multiplying vectors now. Remember, the key to happiness for multiplying vectors is putting them tail to tail. So this vector here is a redraw of the radius. This vector here is the redraw of that force, and that becomes an angle, okay? This was the initial radius, so this vector here corresponds to that R vector right there. Now, would you agree that this angle and that angle are supplements? They're what I call diet pills of one another, and that means, okay, if this is 150, that's 30 or, or whatever. Pick one. It don't matter, but... 
please remember supplementary angles have the same sign. So even if you put these tail to tail, this angle is a replication of that angle, at least signly, because they have the same sign. So you put them tail to tail and multiply by the theta between them. So R cross F times the sine of theta. So please realize that that side's opposite the angle. Uh, and so we use the sine function. And then again, even if it's in this orientation, you can tell that's the angle between them. That corresponds to this one. If I redraw it, keep going with the radius this way, that arrow there is opposite our angle also. So the sine of theta 2 is exactly the same thing as the sine of theta 1. So we take an R cross F sine of the angle between them, and it doesn't matter if you use 30 or 150 or whatever those two angles happen to be. They will be the same. Remember, equilibrium is when it all adds up to nothing, kid. Um, this is going to be an initial review of forces adding up to nothing, and then I will give you an example of torques adding up to nothing because my life adds up to a whole lot of nothing, all right? Remember, this object could be hanging by two strings from a ceiling. The string has tension on the left. This string has tension on the right, whatever. What I did is I broke those two tension arrows into a tension in the Y and a tension in the X for the left one, a tension in the Y and a tension in the X for the right one. The MG is simply MG. Now, what I would ask you is, what are, the, what are the forces inside those two ropes? How much tension is there on the left? How much tension is there on the right? When you do that, you just pick an object and sum the forces in both the X and the Y and uh, set them equal to zero. And, and, and let's do this here. So the sum of the forces in the X is equal to MAX. There is none force in the X. You know that. There are only two X rows, the tension on the right X and the tension on the left X. In both X examples, the X row is adjacent to the angle that is given. So those X components will be cosines. On the Y, what you can tell, there are two Y rows vertically due to the strings, a third Y row vertically due to gravité. Those two Y rows are on the opposite side of the triangle, so those two Ys will be the sine of the angle for the sum of the force in the Y angle anyway, all right? So remember, to the right is positive, to the left is negative, so tension on the right cos 40 minus tension on the left cos 60. That equals the number of people I've interacted with these past two, three weeks. Um, tension on the left sine minus tension on the right sine uh, minus mg equals nothing, too, because the sum of the forces in the y is uh, every bit as much nothing. All right, now what I'm going to do, solve stuff in the x, plug a quantity from the x into the y. This should all look very familiar. We've done it a lot this year, so I don't know. I picked one. I just picked a tension on the right. If I were to isolate the tension on the right, I'm going to plus, plus the tension on the left over, divide by the cos 40s. The tension on the right ends up simplifying to this. What's in that yellow box goes right there, which becomes this. So I'm putting an x into a y. This is the tension on the left sine 60 plus that quantity I called the tension on the right times the sine 40 is equal to mg. All right. I'm going fast. You can push the pause button if and you need to. Tension on the left sin 60 plus tension on the right. Now that's a sine divided by a cos. That's a tan is mg. What I'm going to do is just fish out a tension on the left and divide by everything that's not a tension on the left. And so what this then ends up equaling is mg divided by sine 60 cos 60 tan 60. I right. plug numbers in. Please do the math all at once. <sighs> Parentheses are your friend. All right, so the numerator is just 50 times 9.8. The denominator is that whole entire quantity, sine 60, cos 60 times, tan 60. It becomes tension on the left, 381. All right, now that you know the tension on the left, I'm going to back sub it into the tension on the right e equation, which is this one right there, that tension on the right. Cos 60 uh, divided by the cos 40, 249 newtons. All right, please remember that. That is a very, very simple review. This will now be a torque X example. What I'm going to do is let's pretend in our heads that I'm standing on a board that is 40 kgs 
uh, uh, mass um, 65 kgs. Those two boards happen to be four meter. That board happens to be four meters apart from its two support beams. I'm um, 65, the board is 40. I am one meter away from the support on the left. The center mass of the beam is obviously in the center. This sucker is four meters away, all right? So what I'm gonna do is ask you, what are the forces supporting that item on both the left and the right? What are the forces of the support posts on the left and right? So we will sum the forces in the X, and hey, look at that, there aren't any Xs. We're not playing with our Xs today. So let's go to the Y, shall Y, and the force on the left is the left support post. That's positive because it's up. The mass times gravity of me, MGV, is going to be negative because it's down. The mass times gravity of the board is down also. The force of the right support post is vertically upward, so that's positive. It all adds up the number of friends I have. So we have two unknowns which means there needs to be a second equation. But if the X's can't help us, which the X's are never really all that helpful, we must then go to something else. I'm gonna call it a torque. Now, whenever you solve equations with torque, you have to pick a spot to sum the torques around, your fulcrum, your axis of rotation. So pick one. When you do that, be nice to yourself. Pick a place that will eliminate one of the unknowns. Um meaning those two support beams. If I pick an axis of rotation that is, say, that location right there where that triangle is, well then what's the distance, that radius away that this yellow arrow is from that triangle? And that answer is zero. So it doesn't matter what the force is. If you multiply it by zero, you get zero. So you've just eliminated the unknown that is the force on the left. You could have very easily put the triangle right there. It would not have mat teared. I just happened to do it uh, this way to say it's it's the force on the left, all right? But it doesn't matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is sum the torques around that triangle. It will equal Z rho, okay? Now, sum of the torques equals the torque of the left support around that triangle minus the torque due to V. Now, the torque due to V is going to make that item rotate clockwise. That's why it's negative. The torque due to the board itself is also going to make it rotate clockwise, which is why that's negative. The beam on the right pushing upwards is going to make it rotate counterclockwise, so that's why it is positive. It all adds up to a whole lot of nothing. So the torque on the left is the force on the left times nothing, which makes it nothing. This is the negative torque due to me, the mass times gravity, that force times this distance. This is that force times that distance, and we end up pushing uh, some buttons here to get everything equal to whatever. The force uh, on the right times four. Move those over, put parentheses in, do the math all at once. The force of the beam on the right is 355 newtons. That's way over there. This beam, 355 newtons. All right. Now, uh, what we'll do then, once we have that force of the beam on the right, is the same thing we did with the sum of the forces in the Y. I will back sub that number into the sum of the forces in the y. So now that I know that the force on the right, what that's quantity is, I can say, well, there's a force on the left minus the two forces of gravity. It equals nothing. So I put it back in there. Force on the left is the mass of gravity of me, which is 65 times 9.8 plus the mass of gravity of the beam, 50 times 9.8, whatever, minus that tree, 55. 772 newtons, so please realize, boy, that's 770-something. This one's only 350-something. It makes sense because I'm much closer to this beam than that one. So this one is supporting a lot more of the force, um, and we did that again by just summing the torques on both sides, um, or summing the torques around that triangle, all right? Remember, if these if these distances, if that force in the radius or that force and radius were not perpendicular, you'll just push the sign button. That's all you got to do. Push the sign button. I just didn't include it because the sign of 90 is one. Uh, all right. So what we will then do is uh, these particular questions, 19, 20, and 21 from the Blue Book, Chapter 8. They are dealing with um, just forces in this type of situation. Um I will take a, a couple pictures of those, post them on there. Please remember, hey, torque, force, times distance, or radius, times force, times the sign of the angle between them. Um, hey, you know, yay, physics.